All right, guys, welcome back to another Master and Apprentice video and podcast. How are you doing today, Afton? Not too shabby. How about you? I'm doing pretty good. Got ourselves a Sunday, some football going on. Pretty good. Um, if you guys have already seen, there's a picture slash link. We've done a, a politics video explaining just the politics and all of that behind the scenes for uh, the, the, the prequels and a little bit before that, the Clone Wars and all of that. Today, we're going to do its predecessor the original trilogy, all the politics going into that, uh, all the politics between the two uh, trilogies. And uh, yeah, without further ado, we'll get right into it. Uh, act one. Uh, now with a newly formed empire, now taking control of the galaxy, as we see in the new Andor show, the empire will actually hire different mercenaries and companies to act such as like a police for the sector all right, we see this with um, Andor. They're not actually the Empire, but they act as, you know, like police. They enforce the rules. They do the bidding for the Empire because the Empire is still expanding and still trying to build up its new army and forces. Uh, so while they do all this, uh, it's, you know, they're reaching out to new planets. We can see in uh, Rebels and all kinds of just new shows and books at, at this time um, that they're just going to planet, to sector, to system, just taking control. And uh, while all this is happening, we see the clones actually phased out and the Empire will start actually uh, taking recruits. So they switch from having a little bit less numbers, but really high, highly trained army to lots of numbers, but not, not as well trained army. Yep. So um, Act 2, while... The Senate is still in play, and all the power is being handled by the new Emperor Palpatine. Behind the scenes, the Emperor is Empire is going through sectors, claiming systems, and if any fight back or refuse, they the Empire they just um, propagandized as the CIS uh, holdouts on the rest of the galaxies. So pretty much anyone who refuses to comply with exactly what the um, the not at this point separatists, sorry, but the uh, empire wants they go the long route in this. They tell them the politics or they, they propaganda throw all at them until the civilians rebel against their own government until they think the empire is the right way to go. So we see it, we actually see this in, in the novel Catalyst, the Rogue One novel. We see that early on, people the systems and all the sectors that don't want to join the empire, don't want to be part of its power. Uh, the empire will actually propagandize that it's CIS holdouts and will actually have a siege on it. So bringing us to act three. As the empire is fresh, the empire rules the galaxy fairly, at least the first look, people just see Palpatine as Chancellor Palpatine, this nice, uh, very good looking, very, charismatic dude who is you know taking control of the galaxy right he wants an empire because he wants unity right that's how people look at it first but behind the curtains he has his foot on the neck of the galaxy pushing his reach throughout the ends to the outer rim all of this um just for at least the next 40 years and his rule becomes supreme um behind the scenes he's trying to complete the death star right if you guys haven't already go watch our uh, other video on the Death Star kind of ties into this. He's completing the Death Star, which is a very big part into the politics of the uh, original trilogy, as you'll see. But uh, like I said, he's just power grabbing throughout the galaxy while working with criminals and outlaws this whole time in gangs. Uh, nothing stopping or holding him back. And as this goes on, the galaxy slowly starts to learn and find out the uh, Emperor and the Empire isn't as well as it looked first sight which is where we start seeing rebels and rebel alliances unite so yeah they pretty much tell all the gangs that they need to be with the empire or else they'll die um act five uh act sorry four with completion of the death star and its power and terror being used against the galaxy Literally and figuratively, so it's more like not only did they destroy a couple planets, they also just used it as, hey, we can destroy a planet. Because they don't want to destroy the galaxy or else they're ruling nothing. Right. So they, they're just more using it as a threat where if there's a big rebellion on one planet, they'll just decimate it. 
The Senate is officially uh, disbanding and leaving the galaxy to be completely ruled by Palpatine and all of his weapons of terror. Darth Vader, the Imperial Army, and now the Death Star. Just But by doing this and now blowing up a couple of planets, the Rebels' efforts uh, in uh, this now galactic war are pushed to different heights. So the Rebels are much more, oh crap, we're going to completely die. We, we have to go to these hideout planets that they think are passive. It spreads the rebels thin because if they all go to one planet, that planet blows up. If they find out, and they'll, they'll blow it up really quickly. So it basically they're grasping control over the entire galaxy. Anyone who rebels against them is not having a good fate. Yeah, bringing us to Act Five. With the war at an all-time high now, uh, we get the events of the Battle of Yavin. And this is a pretty big deal because it brings the destruction of the Death Star. Uh, a lot of high leadership like uh, Grand Moff Tarkin are killed. And this is the first big devastating blow to the Empire. Where it, it, it's officially a galactic wide war. And um, this goes on pretty much until the events of Re uh, Return of the Jedi. Really nothing else happens in particular. The Senate is disbanded with the completion of the Death Star. And so it just turns into a pretty much dictatorship, right? As soon as the Death Star is completed, there's no more Senate. Palpatine, if it's his way or your plan has gone. And that's what, it, that's what it becomes. But with this, like I often said, the Rebel Alliance takes down the Death Star and it becomes a huge war. And it's just about who's going to survive, who's going to win. It, it's not looking good for the Rebels for most of it. But then like we see through Return of the Jedi, they're able to knock down the Death Star 2. They're able to kill Palpatine. They're able to kill all high leadership in the Empire, bringing us to pretty much the end of the Empire. There's little, you know, contingency plans and holdouts, but it's not the ruling government anymore for the galaxy. Especially Palpatine's gone. He put all the power in himself, and then he died, and cutting the head off the snake. If the higher other officers didn't have his exact plans in mind, then, well, the Empire pretty much just gets disbanded. We see the contingency plans in, let's say, the Battlefront 2, the cinematic playthrough. But it's not it's not the government. It's not the ruling government anymore. Which brings us to the creation of the New Republic. Which is essentially like the Republic that we see in the prequel era. Uh, there's a Chancellor. Um, and there's a Senate. And the Senates are, you know, different systems represented by their Senator. Um, and it kind of brings us towards the sequel trilogy, which is, will be a, a part three, obviously. Um, but it, while it was a power grab for Palpatine, and he did it in a fashionable way, putting all the power in his name, if he was to ever die, the whole system would collapse, right? Yeah. Especially if him and Vader died. Because let's say Palpatine died and Vader didn't, maybe it'd be a little bit different. But he died, Palpatine died, uh, what's his name, Tarkin was dead, all the big names that were, you know, power, they cut off the head and there was nothing to regrow. So that's kind of the politics in the original trilogy. There's not as much politics as, let's say, the prequels, because like I said, it was simple. Palpatine was a dictator. Yep. And he ruled by the Death Star and his Imperial Army and Darth Vader. The prequels are really leading up to how he became a dictator and how all this happened. But yeah. once he's a dictator, he pretty much controlled everything up until the Return of the Jedi. Yep. Uh, bringing us to the end of the video. Uh, if you guys got any questions, let us know. Uh, like, like I said, we're going to do a part three, the sequel era, and kind of like the Mando era of the universe and the galaxy and how the First Order came into power and the government of the New Republic fell. All of that, we'll get into it uh, in the next next part. If you guys enjoyed this video, leave a comment. Tell us what you guys want to see next, what you guys think about all of this. If you guys have anything wrong with it that we may have messed up, uh, otherwise... Don't forget to hit that subscribe, hit that like. If you're on podcast, hit that follow. You got anything else, Afton? That's it for me. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed. We'll see you guys later. Peace. Peace.